Oh my god, what just happened to the king? Ah, oh, you gotta love previews. Hey guys, it's Dan, your host Judean Reviews, and today I'm back for another video for House of the Dragon. This is my review for this week's episode of House of the Dragon. This is my review for Season 1, Episode 5, titled, We Light the Way. Alright guys, this one's going to be doing a review for today. This one's going to be doing my weekly review for this week's episode of the House of the Dragon. This is my review for episode 5 titled, We Light the Way. So, fifth episode now for House of the Dragons. We are making our way through this first season. And so far, so good. And I'm going to continue to say it every week uh, until it proves me otherwise. Because uh, this was another fantastic episode of House of the Dragon. That is five episodes now that in my opinion have been stellar episodes. So, I think it's safe to say, at least for the first half of the first season, uh, this has been an excellent spinoff series. This has been an excellent spinoff show, and I'm actually very, I wouldn't say surprised, but, you know, I, I was a little worried going going into this show, and, you know, I, I really must say I'm really, really thoroughly impressed so far. So, I uh, hope it keeps up the pace. Episode 6 looks like probably the most interesting episode yet, uh, and we'll get into that at the end of this video where we will discuss the promo, but let's talk about episode 5. So, this episode... This episode right here is the wedding. We get to see the wedding at, um, obviously, uh, back at home with, you know, our Targaryens, with Rhaenyra and Varys and everybody like that. And uh, we get to see a, a pretty awesome wedding. But of course, in Game of Thrones, when you see a wedding, that always means something bad. And uh, we do obviously see a lot of stuff like that in this episode. So we get started with uh, Damon, who goes back to his wife. And basically, uh, he ends up, from what I can tell, and th this was a really interesting scene. Uh, she kind of is very standoffish towards him. And he takes her off of her horse, and she falls to the ground. And he's about to kill her, but we don't see the rest. So I don't know if he killed her, if that's what we're supposed to assume, but that's how they kind of introduced the episode to us uh, with Damon. Just again, Damon is just so weird. I mean, one moment you're kind of like, oh no, he's not going to be a threat. And then the next second you're like, okay, he is a problem, you know? So he's very unpredictable up to this point, I'll say. And then we get to see um, Otto, who has been kicked out. Obviously, we've got, um, you know, kind of the the leaving of him and obviously he's leaving you know King's Landing and he's having to kind of get out of there and Alicent is kind of saying her goodbyes to him right and you know it's kind of a, a sad scene but again one of the things that I noticed a lot in this episode and it's one thing that we focus on a lot is I feel like Alicent cannot be trusted at this point to be honest because the more I watch her and the more I see her kind of develop as a character now Otto's gone and I see what she's doing in this episode you know when they're actually at the wedding and she kind of like walks off for a little bit you kind of start to realize like I feel like something is up with her because Otto was already a problem when he was you know working for uh you know uh the king and all that stuff but now I notice like Alicent is really starting to become sketchy to me at least I don't know why I feel like she's one that we're gonna have to kind of keep our eyes on because I I I don't know I feel like there's something up with her and I feel like there is more of a reason there during that goodbye scene where, you know, I feel like something is going to happen with Alicent and something's going to happen in King's Landing. I just can't quite figure it out uh, yet on what she's going to do. But one of the things that we see a lot of in this episode is the king and how he is, you know, kind of not health-wise doing too well. You know, he's kind of like he's throwing up at sea. And at first I was like, okay, yeah, he's just seasick or whatever. But you, you continue to see him throughout this episode kind of like, you know, not doing so well. He walks off at a lot of points. And you see during the wedding, which is a really uh, kind of interesting scene, uh, his nose starts to bleed, right? And he kind of walks away. And by the end, he falls to the ground. And everybody is, you know, trying to see if he's okay. So... I'm not going to lie, guys. When I saw this episode, I actually thought, oh, crap, is the king dead? Like, are they going to kill the king character? Uh, is he going to die just like that? And, um, well, unfortunately, my hype kind of went down two seconds later. And this is by no means the episode's fault. But the marketing, yeah, it's damn well their fault. Uh, they friggin' show the king right in the trailer for episode six. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I, you actually had me there for a second, guys. Like, I don't know. Um, was I the only one? Like, I thought the king may have actually been dead at that moment at the end of the episode. But, no, he's not not uh clearly because the promo shows uh shows otherwise but right now i'd be predicting his death if i didn't know that you know now with game of thrones and obviously one of the things that we always see a lot of in game of thrones is weddings and 
with weddings come massacres, and that's exactly what we saw in this episode. Now, none of our, like, mains died, like, Rhaenyra and Daemon and the rest of them, like, they're all, you know, they're all still alive, but, um, you know, we saw some bloodshed in this one, and, you know, crap went down, and I mean, as usual, you know, it's not unexpected for this show, something about this show and weddings, and this universe and weddings, they just kind of, like, they can't help themselves, I guess, um, but, uh, yeah, it was a really, really kind of crazy shift there when everything kind of started to go down, and I will say that this episode, in terms of one of the things that I really kind of enjoyed about it, is that we really saw a lot of building, you know, now that Otto's gone, now you got Alicent that's now kind of starting to become, I would say, kind of dangerous. And you got Damon that's, you know, kind of there and you kind of can never tell what the guy really wants to do. Uh, Damon is such a, you know, wild card at this point, I would say, in terms of what he's about to do and stuff. But, um... I thoroughly enjoyed it. So let me know in the comments. If you saw this episode, what did you think about it? What did you think about episode 5 of House of the Dragon? And before we end this review, let's briefly discuss the promo for episode 6, which includes a 10-year time skip. And they are recasting Rhaenyra's actress. They are recasting Allison's actress. And I believe, um, you know, we're going to get to see, obviously, Aegon uh, Targaryen and stuff, uh, who is... Um, you know, a lot older now in this preview and stuff like that. But uh, this should be a really interesting episode because we're going to see a big time skip. Uh, I do not know the name of the actress that plays Rhaenyra and the name of the actress that plays Alicent. Uh, I do apologize for that, but I will say that their younger counterparts did very good. The Both actresses did very, very good. Uh, it's going to be kind of unfortunate to kind of see them go, but obviously with a big time skip like this, you know, you have to kind of get that. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the new actresses, you know, bring to the role. I think it'll, you know, be really cool. And I like it because the first five episodes is like in the early days and then the final five episodes are going to be, you know, post time skip. So kind of like a half and half, you know, this episode truly felt like a mid-season finale. Uh, obviously, we get episode six the next week after, but it really did feel like a mid-season finale to that first half of the season, uh, especially with the wedding and, you know, all that stuff and everything that was going on with the king. Uh, and even though we know he survives, which I wish I didn't know that, uh, it was still really a really fantastic episode. So I have no issues. I would be crazy to not give this episode a 10 out of 10. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Uh, the music was great. The characters are great as usual. The wedding was absolutely amazing and obviously had a lot of shock to it there at some moments. Uh, even though you kind of knew something was going to happen, I, I still really enjoyed it for what it was. And I really, really enjoy what they've been doing with, you know, House of the Dragon so far. I think they've made it a really exciting uh, kind of spin-off prequel series to Game of Thrones. I think so far they've done a really good job. So anyway, if you're new to the channel, make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any weekly reviews for House of the Dragon. Make sure to also follow me on Dan's The Walking Dead reviews on Instagram, guys. And of course, I'll see you guys really soon for another video for House of the Dragon. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and peace out.